Dietrich Hugo Hermann von Koltitz, a name not often heard but with a story that deserves attention. Born on November 9, 1894, in the family's castle in Graflich Wies, now Larkaprudnica, Poland, Dietrich von Koltitz had a rich history of military service. Let's delve into his fascinating journey through the tumultuous times of the 20th century. Early Life and Aristocratic Heritage Dietrich von Koltitz came from an aristocratic Prussian family deeply rooted in military tradition. His father, Hans von Koltitz, served as a major in the Prussian army. This family's noble lineage was the Sedlitsky von Koltitz, bearing the Odrowos coat of arms. The von Koltitz family owned a forest between Prudnik and Nemeslowis, a testament to their deep connections with the land and a sense of duty. World War I, the formative years. Koltitz's military career began during the First World War. He joined the 8th Infantry Regiment Prince Johann George Enar, 107 of the Royal Saxon Army just before the outbreak of the war. This marked the beginning of his journey on the Western Front, where he engaged in significant battles such as the First Battle of the Morn, the First Battle of Ipers, the Battle of the Somme, and the Battle of St. Quentin in 1914. His rapid rise through the ranks led to his promotion to lieutenant and appointment as an adjutant within a year of joining. Between the wars, a period of rebuilding. After World War I, Koltitz returned to Prudnik and embarked on a new chapter of his life. In 1929, he married Huberta, the daughter of General of the Cavalry Otto von Garnier. This union resulted in two daughters, Maria Angelica and Anna Barbara, as well as a son named Timo. During this time, Koltitz demonstrated his versatility by engaging in domestic and international riding competitions. Remaining in the Reichsweger during the Weimar Republic, he achieved the rank of cavalry captain in 1929. His dedication and leadership skills led to further promotions, including becoming the commander of the 3rd Battalion, Infantry Regiment 16 Oldenburg, which was part of the 22. Luftland Division. Koltitz played a role in the occupation of Sudetenland in 1938. World War II, a time of great challenges. Koltitz's service during World War II began with his appointment as the commander of the 16th Air Landing Regiment in Sagan Inn, preparation for the German invasion of Poland, known as Fall Weiss, Case White. Following this, he led his troops through battles like the Battle of Lodz and the Battle of the Bzura, demonstrating his resilience and leadership even in the face of adversity. In May 1940, Koltitz made a notable contribution during the Battle of Rotterdam, where he executed an air landing and secured crucial bridges within the city. His strategic abilities and determination were evident as he navigated the challenges of urban warfare. The Saviour of Paris Dietrich von Koltitz is most prominently remembered for his role as the last commander of Nazi-occupied Paris in 1944. It was during this critical moment that he defied Adolf Hitler's orders to destroy the city and, instead, surrendered it to free French forces when they entered Paris on August 25. Koltitz's decision to spare Paris is attributed to various factors, including his recognition of the city's rich history and culture, the futility of destroying it, and his belief in Hitler's deteriorating mental state. Some sources also suggest that the French resistance played a significant role in limiting his ability to carry out Hitler's destructive orders. Soviet Union and Western Front Koltitz's military journey extended to the Eastern Front, where he participated in the Siege of Sevastopol. This siege took a toll on his regiment, reducing its strength significantly. Health issues also began to surface during this time, including heart problems and symptoms of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Despite these challenges, Koltitz continued to rise through the ranks, eventually taking command of the 11th Panzer Division during the Battle of Kursk. In March 1944, he was transferred to the Italian Theatre of Operations and played a role in the Battle of Anzio and Monte Cassino. His leadership skills were further put to the test when he was transferred to the Western Front in June 1944, where he took command of corps and faced the Allied breakout from Normandy. The Military Governor of Paris On August 1, 1944, Koltitz was promoted to General der Infanterie and appointed as the Military Governor of Paris. His arrival in the city revealed a challenging situation with limited resources and troops who were largely unmotivated conscripts. The situation took a turn when the Paris police went on strike on August 15, 
followed by a general insurrection led by the French Communist Party on August 19. Despite facing immense challenges, Koltitz engaged in negotiations and ceasefire agreements with various factions, ultimately surrendering the city to the free French forces. Captivity and later life After the war, Dietrich von Koltitz was held at Trent Park in London, along with other senior German officers. In 1947, he was released from captivity, and in 1956, he revisited his wartime headquarters at the Hotel Muris in Paris. His life after the war was marked by various encounters and experiences, demonstrating the complexity of his role during the occupation of Paris. The Controversy The controversies surrounding Dietrich von Koltitz's actions during World War II continue to be a subject of debate. While he is often viewed as the savior of Paris for refusing to destroy the city, his alleged involvement in war crimes is a dark cloud over his legacy. Conversations recorded during his internment suggest complicity in the liquidation of Jews. These controversies remain a topic of discussion and investigation to this day. In conclusion, Dietrich von Koltitz's life was a tapestry of military service, complex decisions, and a legacy that continues to be explored. His actions during the occupation of Paris in 1944 have left an indelible mark on history, and his story serves as a testament to the complexities of wartime leadership and the human experience during challenging times. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing to our channel. By subscribing, you'll be notified when we upload new videos. Thank you again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video. You can also help to support of my channels at PayPal details in the description box below.